day. Hey everyone, welcome to my next video. Today this is going to be a shorter one. And today I just want to talk about a little of ST-Link and some problems that you might have while compiling and using all the code. And some of the struggles that you may uh, come forth and I don't mention it in the videos because I, I, I assume that you have all the tools installed or you know how to fix a problem. So if you're stuck anywhere in the first video, you can use this video to fix some stuff. So one thing is if you have all the compiling tools necessary. Because I move my computer and clean it a lot of times, I try different distros and desktop environments, I have a folder, actually a file, called useful, and I have all the tips and installation instructions to how to install various things like my icon theme and my uh, window theme and also my compiling packages. And I always had to install Build Essential, C, Make and Make, and GCC and G++ for compiling C and C++ code. Also for ST-Link, because it uses a USB device, it uses a, a USB library. So make sure you have installed this as well, because without this, uh, the compilation of ST-Link will crash and will say that uh, the library is missing. So make sure you use this. Also, if you want to know, I have these two uh, options in my .input rc file in the home directory. And this just says that the terminal will ignore ca case commands and tab uh, in scroll complete. So what this means, if I go to documents, I can uh, click the lower D and when I click tab, it will ignore the case and just scroll with each click between the different options. So this is what I have, it's really useful. So if you want to have this as well, here's a tip. So you can pause the video and copy the code. So if you go back to the ST-Link, here's the site, we can copy it again. This would be a new version. Some things are fixed all the time, like uh, some things were done three days ago, but let's assume it's the same. So let's go to my new project folder, which is in documents. It's for a new video and let's remove any old folders and clone new one. So this is what you would do when uh, you are installing ST-Link in the embedded folder that I have. Also, uh, I won't be talking about the GDB server, the GNU debug uh, tool that's used for debugging C code because I think it's not really that useful and it's more useful when you have an IDE and uh, those are not really readily available for Linux and because uh, I don't do Windows that much only for some clients uh, on the Linux side we will touch up only on the ST-Link tool that's provided over here. So let's go to ST-Link and this is all the files and just run make. If you wanted to go faster you can uh, do make clean so we can start again and there's an option dot j and you can specify the number course you want to assign to the compiler if you don't type any number it will use all the cores and you can see that the first spike was for one core or how many it uses by default and this is all the four virtual cores that i have and i have also 12 uh, 20 gives of ram so that's no problem you can see all the stuff that has been compiled. We have been using stflash as a part of the make, the make uh, command. If we go back to the source file, this is just the template file, which I have opened over here. So this is just a template file open here, and this is the make file. We can go down the make file, and we can see that when we initiate the burn command, it will uh, start the flash command. So we know the flash command uh, all the time. The util is used to launch a server which is going to connect to the board. And if you connect the GDB server to the board, we can remotely upload the code through it through the terminal. So you don't need to use those tools. So this is the debugger. Essentially, you can run the uh, code, you can stop the code, you can read from the memory. But we're gonna use the uh, we're not gonna use that because I said I think it's more useful when you have an IDE attached to it. But let's use the GUI local. I had made the GUI local uh, public because I have if we go into root and go into my cat uh, basher C. 
I have paths for the compiler, the GUI tools, the GDB server, and the other tools from the embedded folder. So I can from anywhere run the st, uh, how is it called? It's called ST link GUI local. So let's run it. And it's a, it's a nice GUI interface. It's a nice window. And we can connect to a device. There's a STM32F4 board. So if I click connect, it recognizes it, flash, and starts reading the memory. And yes, this is a really great way. So you can read the memory. And uh, also this is in binary. So, or in this case, it's going to be in hex. So as from datasheet we read before, the flash uh, memory for this microcontroller starts at the uh, uh, 0, 0, 008 and all zeros ahead. And this is the first memory address and this is the code that is inside. So this is all the code that is in microprocessor right now. And then empty code. So this is 0, FFFF, so all the ones. So all the memory is just filled with one. This is called empty memory. So it's all ones, not all zeros, but all ones. But what we can do is, and conveniently we can see the flash size and the RAM size. It's all uh, described in the processor. All we can do is we can also erase or flash, or also we can export device memory. But let's disconnect from this utility and use another great utility. So let's just open another window. Uh, it's called the ST flash. So this is the same one that would burn code onto your microcontroller. But if you just put in option erase, this will do mass erasing. So this will uh, erase everything on the flash portion of the IC. In other terms, it will write once all over the memory, just like in here. Come on. Oh, these are zeros right now because it uh, hasn't read from the processor, but this should be once everywhere. So now that it has finished, we can connect to it. It's going to start reading the memory and we should see from the beginning to the end all ones or FFFFFs. And uh, this is useful if you have something broken while uploading code or the processor isn't responding when trying to upload a code. So if you have the flash command errors, so it's uh, try to upload and it says some kind of error or it's taking too long, do a mass erase and then try again. And now we can see they're all Fs. Great. Now, if you're not comfortable with terminal, but uh, you should be by now, you can also upload code with this. So we can open code so let's go into it's going to open the directory that the application has been launched in so you can launch it in the preferred directory and if we go for our GUI video over here you have the C file but it's not compiled we don't have the binary file so let's go into our fi uh, folder let's go to documents on video and run make so it's going to compile our code and this is the template this should be blinking so let's select the bin and it's going to read this. So this is the code over here and we're going to uh, say flash. And yes, we want to flash it at this starting point. Start. Boom. And now I can see you can because I don't have a camera, but uh, I can see the LEDs flashing on my board. So this is one way you can use this GUI for uploading. But I think when you're compiling in the terminal, you can also upload it in the terminal, especially if you use just make burn command, that's going to do all again. But now it's not going to do because the no device has been found. It's in use. Yes, it's connected over here. We have to disconnect over here. And then the debugging light switches back to, uh, to red before it was green. And now it will upload. But sometimes it might hang over here. It will print this line, but won't print everything else and crash so then you then it's a good idea to use the mass array that we did over here so this is one uh, small tip that I want to show you guys so this is all being compiled and used right now so the GUI file and the GDP server is well available if you want to um, this is all uh, in the next video I will try to make a video that will be more useful per se now it's been only theory but in the next video, I will be making a library for an IC. It will be probably the 24-bit ADC 4 channel, uh, 1000 mega samples.
uh, sorry, 1000 samples, that would be crazy. 1000 samples per second. And it's a nice EDC that we decided to use on a project and it was available. So we just bought it. Uh, so I have another one at home. So I'm going to make a video about that. So how to read its datasheet, uh, similar to SPI because it works on SPI. And we will make a, a small kind of library with .h and .c files. So you can use as well. Uh, for next project so you get more comfortable for writing your own libraries for any IC you want not just relying like in the Arduino days for the people to write the code or libraries for you so this will uh, widen the horizon of all the possible IC you can work with because you just have to read the datasheet and code for it so I'll see you then